Now that we're somewhat familiar with transforming objects, let's take a look at transforming object components. Before we jump into that though, we're going to delete all the objects in our scene, and we're gonna learn a couple of more useful hotkeys. So the first one I wanna show you is if you hit the A key while something is selected, it will deselect it. And if you hit it again, it'll select everything. So get used to toggling between those two modes. It can be very useful. So while we have multiple objects selected using the A key, or just in general, if we were to shift left click them, we can actually translate all of those objects together. We can rotate them all together and we can scale them all together. In order to cancel any of those operations, such as the scaling here, we can simply right click and everything will revert to the state that it was in before I tried to scale it. Same thing with translation and rotation, of course. Now, if we wanted to empty our scene of all these objects in it, again, we can toggle the A key to make sure we have everything selected. And then we can press the X key and we'll get this little delete menu that pops up and we can either press it with the mouse or we can hit the D key. And now we have an empty scene. If we'd like to add objects to our scene, we should first make sure that our 3D cursor is in the center of the world. This is so that we can have predictable control over where our meshes appear. This is not a hard and fast rule, however, you're more than welcome to move your 3D cursor all around the world. Just keep in mind that sometimes you might think it's on the grid, when really it's floating above, or below, or in any number of weird places. In order to reset our 3D cursor to the origin of the world, or this, this center point here, we can simply hit the hotkey Shift-C and it will return to the origin of the world. At this point, we can now add in a new mesh. So the first way I wanna show you how to do that is using the tools panel. Let's come down to the create tab on the left and we can see add primitive, which is all these mesh options here. Primitives are more or less just very basic objects and components that we can use to construct more complex objects. There is another way that we can do this, however, using the hotkey shift A, which will open an add menu inside the 3D window where we can find the same options. Now, if this tool menu isn't available to you, simply toggle it closed or open using the T key. It's easy to kind of close this and be somewhat lost about where it went. So just remember, hit the T key. Now let's add a cube. You'll notice that when we add primitives into our scene, we actually get this little control box in the corner that allows us to change some of this, the data about that primitive. We can set the radius to one, which is its default, which allows us to have a cube that is perfectly aligned with our grid. We also have the option to align our cube to view, which is based on our camera, of course. And we can change the location and rotation of our cube. Usually though, I generally tend to zero these out because I don't need to change any of these at the time I've created it. I'll manipulate the cube later on after I've introduced it into the scene. So now that we have our cube in our scene, let's change from object mode into edit mode. It's very important that you get these two modes sorted out early on. If you think about it this way, object mode is allowing you to transform the object that you have in various ways but for the most part, it stays the same, except in the exclusion of scaling, of course, it will kind of squash it. But for the most part, if you wanna manipulate this more drastically, we need to go into edit mode so that we can manipulate the individual components that make up this cube. So as you can see here, once we switch into edit mode, the entire cube is selected. We can again deselect everything with the A key and now we can actually click these individual points or vertices that compose the cube. Immediately, we're able to move them in various ways that we could not achieve inside of object mode. I'll just undo that with the Control Z hotkey. Now, there are actually three modes within edit mode, and these deal with the actual components we'll be editing inside of edit mode. So the first one is vertex mode, the second one is edge mode, and the final one is polygon or face mode. Now about vertex mode, if we try to rotate a vertex, nothing will happen. And if we try to scale it, nothing will happen. This is because we can't actually rotate 
or scale a single vertex, we have to have more than one selected in order to make sense of rotation or scaling. If we switch to edge mode, we can predictably manipulate edges. We can also do what's called sliding an edge. So again, if we come over to our tools menu, we can find a number of different modifiers or operations. And if we pay attention to the contour of our cube, we have this parallel direction here, parallel to the floor that is, and then we have this sloping direction. If we activate this edge slide operation here, we can see that we can slide our edge down. And then if we want to bring it back up, it will find that angle and slide parallel. This can be really useful. The same way with most of the other operations, we can cancel it with right click, or if we like where we've moved it, we can accept it with a left click. Now there's a bit of a warning that I'd like to show you about this. The hotkey for edge slide is tapping G twice, and we can slide again. But note that we can slide this edge all the way on top of this other edge. And we might think that that's all well and dandy. We have this nice wedge shape. But the problem that we're running into here is that we've actually stacked two sets of vertices on top of each other. And the way that we can check this is by switching our shading mode, which is down here, from solid to wireframe, and switching into vertex mode, and then pressing the B key in order to drag select over this. And now you can see we actually have three vertices selected, even though we are only shown that we have two selected. If I press the B key again and drag over this corner, you'll see we have four vertices selected out of eight, when really we expect to see two out of six. The reason being because we've stacked those vertices on top of the other vertices. In order to remedy this, we need to press the W key, which opens up our specials menu and hit remove doubles. Once we do this, Blender will report that we've removed two vertices and the menu will show us that we are selecting two out of six vertices as we had predicted. Now we have a nice manifold wedge shape. If we wanna switch from our wireframe to our shaded mode, we can simply hit the Z key. And there we go. Let's switch back into edit mode because I toggled out of it just so we could preview the mesh. And the last mode that we have is our face mode. This will allow us to select polygons. Every time we select a polygon or a face, it will also select all of the edges and vertices that comprise it. And as we move it, it will move those edges and vertices that are connected to it. The only edge that's staying put in this instance is this edge here, as it's not directly affected by this vertex. Now to reiterate everything we've shown here, I'm actually going to delete this messed up cube or wedge, and I'm going to add in a sphere. A sphere is a little more complicated, and as such we have slightly more menu options here. So I'm going to cut in half the number of segments and rings that we have in this sphere, and now I'm going to enter into edit mode. And you can see this sphere is also comprised of all of the same components our cube had, albeit slightly more complicated. We can still manipulate all of these vertices in the same way and all of these components in the same way. That doesn't really change. But there are also some selection modes that I'd like to show you. So we looked at the B key, which allows us to do a drag selection. But if we're not in wireframe mode, it will exclude anything on the backside that's not visible to us. So if I hit the A key, which deselects everything in the B key again, and left click and drag a selection out, you can see we've got everything from that side that we could see. So let's move our camera angle back. Let's hit A to deselect. And now let's enter into wireframe mode. Again, you can come down here and change it manually. I prefer the Z key. So now if we move our camera around to line up our vertices properly, if I hit that B key and drag select over this and let go, you can see that we've selected all of those vertices because we can see through the object using wireframe mode. If I switch back into solid or shaded mode, now we can see that we've got everything selected 
We can also use the B key and the middle mouse button to deselect sections of our mesh. This can be very useful. I'm going to deselect everything by pressing A. Now another useful selection mode is actually the C key. This is kind of like painting a selection onto the surface of our mesh with the left mouse button. And if we want to get rid of a selection, we can hold down the middle mouse button. When we're happy with what we've selected, we can then hit the right mouse button to cancel that, and that little circle will disappear. And now we have our selection, which we can now manipulate. While we're using that C key, however, we're not able to move the camera around because again, the middle mouse button is now delegated to deselection. You can also scroll the scroll wheel while we're in this mo mode in order to select a larger portion of things that are in our view or deselect a larger portion. So this becomes very useful if we're trying to select something very specifically or if we wanna select a group. Just keep that in mind. And then again, in order to exit this mode, we can hit the middle or the right mouse button. Alternatively, I believe we can hit the escape key as well as I did there. The same thing occurs with the B key. If we hit the middle mouse button, what it will do is it will deselect. We can't actually move our camera until we're done with that mode. So just keep that in mind. Another very useful selection tool tip is if we hold down the Alt key and select, we can actually select rings of objects or object components, I should say. And the way that this works is if we go to the middle of an edge and hit Alt and click, it will actually select around that set of edges. If we go to the middle of this edge and hit Alt and click, it will select in this direction. Now you'll notice that because we're using a sphere that has poles on either end, it will actually terminate the selection at that pole. It won't continue to select down the other side. Just keep that in mind. We have to have a good flow. So because there is no terminating vertex going around this, if I select it, it will go around and select all of those vertices. And now I can manipulate this shape and make some interesting changes. The same principle occurs in face mode as well as edge mode. Again, being careful in face mode, if you select in the middle of this edge, it will actually select in this direction. If you select towards the middle of this edge, it will go around. That can be very useful, just be mindful of it. Now, one of the last warnings I wanna leave you with about manipulating geometry is that, again, we wanna make sure that we're not squishing and squashing things so that it intersects with itself. This, for example, is horribly non-manifold geometry. It is not something that we want. When I scaled this using the S key, I scaled it way too far in and it intersected it with itself. Another way you can tell is if you've got this sort of edge here and we go into edge mode and you try to select that, you'll notice there is no actual edge there. If we kind of intersect our camera with the geometry, you can see it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This sort of object wouldn't be able to exist in the physical world. Therefore, this is the kind of geometry we want to avoid. So let me undo that. We can do the same thing with a single edge. Again, if we scale things too far, we can see that we can make a real mess of things. So we wanna be predictable with our geometry. So as I'm using edge slide, which is double tapping the G key, I don't wanna slide all the way to this edge. I wanna leave at least a little bit of room around things to make sure that I'm not intersecting and that things behave predictably. So I would encourage you to spend a little time getting familiar with switching in and out of object and edit mode, switching in between vertex, edge, and polygon or face mode, and becoming familiar with manipulating the components of our objects. In the next video, we're going to take a look at adding meshes into edit mode as well as into object mode, the differences between those. Currently, we've only looked at adding in meshes in object mode, so be careful about that. We're going to be taking a look at really manipulating objects by tearing them apart, extruding them, bridging them, adding them together. We'll look at acceptable ways to intersect meshes, and we'll discuss some modeling theories and practices about how to bring references in. So keep an eye out for that next video. It's gonna be a pretty hefty one, but hopefully it'll get us well on our way to better understanding how to create our objects in 3D. 
I hope you all have a great weekend, and I hope this video helps you out. Let me know if you've got any questions, and take care.